Hi friends! Today is exciting because of a few things. What fantastic timing upon the arrival of Mothership 10, I received an opportunity to partner with the brand and I couldn't be more honored, more grateful. I can't thank you enough. Thank you fam again for everything, for your watching, your comments, your tagging. Thank you Pat McGrath Labs for the opportunity. And this palette is especially special because they personalize it those are my initials aa wow i don't even want to use it but of course that's silly we're going to dive into the swatches and the demo and if it's your first time here Hi, I'm Alicia, an online coach who specializes in flexibility, body weight training, and helping those achieve their movement goals. And I also love Pat McGrath. All timestamps will be down below if you wanted to just skip over to the eyeshadow palette portion, maybe just the swatches or the demo. Oh, and my apologies. Why don't you come in a little closer? <gasps> That's enough. I think it's time to get into the eyeshadow now because I'm just highly anticipating the swatches. Here we have Mothership 10 Moonlit Seduction. Up close, I didn't touch it. I wanted you to get the first look of the palette. And I'm happy to now finally see it in person because uh, the fam and I were just contemplating whether it's cool, neutral, warm. And I think because of how Pat's products are usually shot on top of the gold sequins, tends to give any product that's on the sequins a warmer filter to it when videoed. And if it's your first time encountering a Pat McGrath Mothership palette, Welcome, we love to have you. In addition to the shades and the demo, I'll also go over the anatomy of a mothership palette, how you can approach it, especially if it's your first time familiarizing yourself with the different finishes and how you can combine them for beautiful eye looks. Skin Tense Glow, a soft beige shimmer. Definitely on the cooler side. Ooh, Rosewood Romantique, a rose sienna matte. Rosewood anything? Sign me up, Platinum Dusk. My goodness. A sparkling metallic anthracite. Ooh, I love how this sits taupey silver. Beautifully smooth, one of the metallic shades in the palette, lightweight in texture. Our first specialized shade, we have VR Sextasy. I think this is a duochrome, if I'm not mistaken. So let me introduce another light source to see the shift. We're looking at a a vermilion base with a sparkling blue shift. And here it is swatched. It looks foiled. That is very shiny. And here again, just turning my wrist so you can see the vermilion base and then the sparkling blue shift. It almost looks magenta from this angle. Huh, huh? Astral Gold Lust. It's hard to see, but there are a lot of different colored pearls in this gold, which I was happy to see. Usually the gold are one dimensional, but I believe this one is a golden champagne. However, there is a lot of shine in this golden champagne. One of Pet's Dazzler shades that she usually has at the quarter end of the palette. They're grouped here in four and you have the matte and metallics on the other side. These are your jewel toppers, if you will, can be used as the show stopping shade on the lid or maybe to provide a little bit of a scatter effect, which we'll actually go into now. I'll go down the column and go directly woo, into the astral lilac aura. Sparkling platinum lilac. So this has more of a translucency to it meant again to be topped over the number of shades in here and that soft lilac delivery of color I love that it's a little cooler in tone I think a great parallel to the gold shade if you wanted to go gold champagne or lilac then you have that option moving down the line here we have blitz Venus, a sparkling golden quartz you could detect a little bit of that pink Again, incredibly shiny, and I could only imagine how beautiful the lilac shade will be over the quartz shade. 
Wow. The third matte of the palette, we have Plum Cabaret, a neutral plum matte. Bronze Devotion, golden bronze metallic. And this is more of Pat's traditional molten metallic formula. You can see how beautifully smooth and shiny it is and one that I like to sometimes just buff across the lid and blur out the edges softly. And lastly, we have Extreme Nocturne, brown taupe matte. So here are all the swatches for Moonlit Seduction. I think you can perhaps place this palette neutral cool is not as cool as i would say divine rose one is mothership seven divine rose two more pink magenta leaning and utopian dream has a mixture of of neutral and cool in there as well but i think this is a little more monochromatic in nature even with the dashes of the the duochrome with this vermilion base and the gold here more or less, like that rosy, taupey vibe, I think is very much prevalent in Mothership 10, and I cannot wait to finally plop these on the eyes. Using concealer to prep the eyes, I haven't done this in quite some time, whoa. I'm gonna buff that across the lid here, and that will serve as our base for shadow. I gotta go with the rosewood first. I'm dying to see how this shade looks because sometimes how a color appears in pan might not actually appear the same way on the lid. Not super warm, but not ultra cool either. Has a very smooth application. And again, I think that rosiness beautifully comes through. You could just use Rosewood Romantique as your one and done shade if you wanted to just complete a matte look. The Skin Tense Glow shade, usually in the palette to provide the highlight for inner corner, brow bone, even on the center of the lid. And with that, I'll take a shader brush. Well, I could take something smaller here and play Skin Tense Glow on the inner part of the eye, and that's going to deliver beautiful brightness to the inner corner. Of course, I could take a little bit here on the brow arch. Go in with a light hand because this shade packs a punch. If you don't want it to appear too icy, then make sure you buff it well into the skin. And as I mentioned, you can take Skin Tends Glow across the lid, but I think we gotta go in with one of these metallic shades. I'm dying to see Platinum Dusk in action, so taking that with my finger, and I'm using my finger to gently tap the color across the lid because the texture is lightweight enough that you can rely on a finger tap to just buff the edges gently and it beautifully scatters into the matte shade without looking abrupt or rough on the blend. And to have Extreme Nocturne, I mean, this color reminds me of the taupe shade in Subliminal, the beloved Mothership one. I like that there's more of like a taupey brown in the collection now. We have a lot of the warm browns. We have Taboo from Midnight Sun, which is more of like a, a warmer neutral brown and the warmer browns in Bronze Seduction. But now to have this tone, yes. Taking a shader brush now and tapping extreme nocturne on the outer part of my lid and that just buffed itself very soft on the application i'm actually very pleased with uh platinum dust it's just so soft but beautifully shiny at the same time and that silvery taupey hue goes beautiful with the rosewood shade and now with extreme nocturne although i just pressed the shade on top of platinum dusk it just buffed by itself and kind of found its way onto the lid without me having to over manipulate the shadow whatsoever. I just tapped it in there and it landed well. And now Extreme Nocturne on the outer quarter of my lower lash line, just taking my fluffy brush here bringing everything together. We have another addition to the collection. With Moonlit Seduction, we have a new Permagel Precision Liquid Liner, Extreme Black Coffee. I was so happy to see that we were coming out with a Permagel Liquid Liner in Black Coffee. As you know, 
black coffee is my go-to pencil with any eyeshadow any color now to have it in the permagel liquid formula i think is outrageously good because we love the black one and i'll just show you side by side so you could gauge the difference in terms of how brown this looks next to extreme black but i like that black coffee released with this palette because now it just gives it an earthiness while also delivering the same intensity intensity and color richness that you could get from extreme black but having the black coffee tone i just think grounds the look a little bit and we're gonna try to do this on camera wish me luck the permagel liner comes with a felt tip construction is quite inky but not so much that it spills a pigment on your lash line you can actually control it pretty well very flexible so there is a good delivery of stiffness and flexibility so you can achieve a pretty clean wing but i understand that it might take some practice you know and i haven't done this in quite some time so Forgive me if I'm a little rusty. So that is extreme black coffee on top of platinum dusk. I think a beautiful contrast between the just black brown tone from the liner juxtaposed against the silvery taupe from platinum dusk. We're not quite done yet with this eye. As you know, I like to just pile on all the colors. Why not? Let's go in. Ooh, we got to go in with Blitz Venus. Blitz Venus is the quartz shade. And why not? introduce this shade on the inner lower part of the lash line the actual shades again are your jewel shades from the palette right you can rely on them for accent moments if you want it a little more sparkling glam because if you hit a hard light on these shades especially if you let them settle on your lid for a little bit they just have incredible reflectivity so I know it's hard to see on camera, but I'm shining a hard light on these textures. And you could just see the ultra shine these deliver. So again, not only can you use them solo if you want it, like I'm doing now on the inner lower part of my lash line, you can also lightly tap any of these astral shades on top of your main stage lid shade. So if I were to just lightly tap here, I can place let's see, on the inner part of my eye over Platinum Dusk. And why not, let's take Astral Lilac Aura. Ooh, over Platinum Dusk. And that brings a little more of that lilac tone to the lid. Now beware, if it's your first time encountering an Astral shade from Pat McGrath, there's no need to swirl. If you swirl, you're gonna get too much product, residue will fall, and you'll be sad. You just need to tap once and the warmth from your fingertip will be enough to grab the right amount of product that you can lightly tap over the lid and then again deliver that sparkle effect. Taking a little bit of Rosewood Romantique on the bottom here to buff Extreme Nocturne, huh? What shall we do on the other side? Well, we have to use VR Sex to see. I mean, that goes without saying. Let's set that up with a Plum Cabaret. I think the Vermilion Base and Plum Cabaret will go well together. Let's dust this across the lid now. And the mattes are incredibly soft and smooth to apply on the skin, but deliver beautiful color at the same time. All right, done and done. If you want it, you could go in with Rosewood Romantique first and then with Plum Cabaret, but Going a Plum Cabaret by itself, I think, is a fantastic idea. And why not going in with the Intensifies wand just to, you know, spruce up the glitz and glamour. Adherence amplifier, if you will, to amp up the shine of these Astral Specialized shades here, gliding it here over the lid, and it doesn't disrupt a Plum Cabaret too much. Now with VR Sextasy, I don't know if I'm ready. Placing that, my goodness, on the lid and just lightly tapping, whoa. The Artistry Wand brings out the blue shift a lot, but the base of VR Sextasy just pairs beautifully with Plum Cabaret, I mean, they match. 
Now just tapping in and under the crease to better shape the shadow. Inner corner time, my goodness. We gotta go in with Astral Gold Lust, I mean, hello? And I can also place a little more of the wand here on the inner part of the eye. And now placing that gold shade overlapping VR sex to see. Tapping here and man oh man, this is shiny. We're getting shiny. Pulling it through the inner part of the eye here. So we got a lot of shine going on in the inner part of the eye and that was due to placing the artistry wand there so it could create a little more adherence. But I'm just in love with how VR Sextasy looks over Plum Cabaret. They match so well. Now with the inner part of the lash line, why not bronze devotion probably one of the warmer shades out of the palette so this is like a gold bronze shade but i think it pairs well with what we got going on in the lid and again taking a little bit of extreme nocturne and just placing it on the outer corner of the lid so if you ever changed your mind and you're like listen i want to smoke up the look then you can introduce the shade quickly on the outer part of the lid and just tap it. And once you get the majority of the color there, carefully just whip the edges up towards Plum Cabaret or whichever mat you decided to place on the crease first. And it will blend beautifully well. It'll just look like, you know, that was your intention the entire time. A little bit also on the outer part of the lower lash line, but I think I want to prominently have Plum Cabaret on the lash line altogether. So let's take a smaller brush but something that's still soft that's going to buff the color well under the lash line. And you can keep the color tighter to the lash line if you wanted by using a smaller brush, but I like this, this slightly hazy effect we got going on. And of course, like I showed on this eye, if you wanted to amp up the shine and the glitz of VR Sextasy, you could take Astral Lilac Aura, lightly tapping and placing that on the center of the lid. And you could have it travel a little higher than your crease. No, that's going to scatter over the map, but I love that because again, hey rhymes, once it settles, it just has like this disco ball effect that, man, when the light hits, incredible. And a little bit of astral gold lust on the inner part. Can't even see it, so shiny. And no, you don't necessarily have to create a wing every time you use a liquid liner. For instance, I'll just place this on the lash line because if you want more definition here across your lash line and not necessarily it being a wing, you can still use the liquid liner to achieve that task, especially if you're applying falsies this will then cover the border between your lash line and the lash band and there we go we applied a little bit of extreme black coffee on the lash line but not as a wing like we did on this side more so just to add definition to the lash line going in with fetish eyes mascara curled my lashes now we're mascaring. I wanted to complete the eye look first before deciding on which divine blush to apply. I mean, we could go in with a few. De Desert Orchid, I think, will be a great pairing, especially with the involvement of the more neutral tone bronze and taupes in here. Nymphette, oh my gosh. Definitely going with gold and moonlight. Think only appropriate. We could do Divine Rose 2 from the duo line or even Cosmic Coral. I'm actually thinking Divine Rose for at least this side because I think like the more mauvey plummy tone will work very well with the with Platinum Dusk on the lid. Taking the Divine Blush brush and just whipping that all across the fish. Getting a little color there. Ooh, this was a good choice. Not only will we take that on the cheeks, but we'll take that around the forehead as well. For this side, we could do Paradise Venus. I know that might seem like, whoa, but why not? I'm gonna take a little bit of Paradise Venus just on the higher points of the cheek, right? To create that sculpt, which you know I love to do with the shade. Because I think with Plum Cabaret being present, it welcomes the terracotta tone of paradise venus beautifully and now we compare that with another shade going down the line i you know for for sure desert orchid this is my this is my go-to combination 
between both having more of like a warmer neutral tone to the cheeks matched up with like the blue shift from VR Sex to see. It's a good choice. It's a good choice. Now Golden Moonlight with the blurring brush. Just lightly whipping that here on the cheekbones. Lining the lips with the Permagel Ultra Lip Liner in Structure. And in with the Satin Allure Lipstick in Negligee. And why not applying a little bit of flesh for it, just to give it some shine, but also a little bit of smokiness. And here are some close-up shots of not only the complexion and cheek products, but of course the eyes. And I was going through my head comparing this palette to Divine Rose 1 and 2 and Utopian Dream. As I understand, they are similar shades in terms of the vibe. Very much a lot more monochromatic than other Mothership palettes, what comes to mind. Uh, Subversive, Subliminal, Sublime, Midnight Sun. Mothership 10 has the Plum, Rose, and Taupe which I think are such beautiful anchor shades for the other metallic and blitz and actual shades in the palette, right? You have the duochrome, you have the beautiful twinkle quartz, the gold twinkle, the lilac, but then you have just your platinum and bronze shades. You can go wrong with those, especially if you are intimidated by Pat McGrath palettes, the actual shades, the textures, you don't know which where to go. There's a beautiful balance in Mothership 10, not only represented by the textures included, where we have the three mattes, the three metallics, and the four specialized shades, two being the astral and two being blitz ones. They just harmonize so well together because you got more of the taupe, but then you have the bronze, the duochrome blue shift shade in there, and there are so many ways you can layer these, which is why I cannot wait to dive back in and create more looks. Ones that are more simple, others that have a lot more colors and textures involved. And to have Extreme Nocturne in this palette, it's great to have a smoke shade that's topier in nature, not necessarily just a dark brown or a dark mahogany, which is what we had from not only Divine Rose 1, but 2 and Utopian Dream. The Extreme Aubergine plum shade from bronze seduction and extreme dusk from midnight sun which definitely has a, a heartier dosing of smoke this sits somewhere in the middle and i just love that it's in here it just adds an earthiness to any of the shades you decide to combine it with whether it be rosewood romantique or plum cabaret rosewood again you can't go wrong with rose it's just beautifully perfect and i would actually argue for you possibly using this for blush i didn't do it here but if i take the divine blush brush just lightly tap because this this packs a punch remember it's a shadow you could use the shadow as a blush because remember the mothership palettes are artistry palettes you could use them on eyes and face plum cabaret as a blush you're welcome. Now, while I understand the colors themselves might not be bold, I just can't help but appreciate how this is put together where the user will have a seamless experience in layering the shades, whether they use just the mattes, the metallics, the blitz or the actual shades, solo or together. Again, I just think they match well with each other in terms of the color and the texture. And I just, again, cannot wait to dive back in, create more looks because there's so much more in this palette. The fact that I only did two looks and just just from that, the ideas are brewing. So definitely stay tuned for another video diving into Mothership 10. We'll get more colors down as well as a comparison video because I know you would like to see this shade. Well, all the shades, especially for me, I would like to see Extreme Nocturne compared to Extreme Dusk, uh, Taupe, and the other brown shade, the Taupey brown shade in Subliminal to compare the Blitz and Natural shades that exist in her collection as well as the metallic one, so I am very happy with this palette. And although I am partnering with Pat McGrath Labs for this video, I just, I had a feeling Moonlit Seduction would just sneak in and just wrap its arms around me tight not let me go. This is in heavy contention with my beloved Midnight Sun, but the reason probably being is that it just has a similar vibe. I think the inspiration is strong. It's hearty. I can see and visualize just in terms of moonlit, just the moon having different tones and textures about it. The entire outer space inspiration 
bracket is vast and this is such an elegant take on it I feel you know what I'm saying again a huge thank you to Pat McGrath labs for sponsoring this video and again to you fam for all your support to help me get to this point let me know down below what your thoughts are on the palette if you've already ordered it if you're waiting on it if you're skipping on it I'll see you down in the comments and until then that is a wrap thank you all so much for watching I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, Pat McGrath Labs Extravaganza or Monthly Faves. Take care and I will see you again soon.